Live from the Jack and Jones Strider Studio in beautiful CCM at the University of Cincinnati, it's the Dennis Daniels Show! Tonight's guest, WWE Tough Enough contestant, Jeremiah Riggs. Plus, John Pokemon and the Dennis Daniels Show Band. And now, here is your host. He is the first ever recipient of the BearCast Radio Lifetime Achievement Award, Boogaloo Shrimp. Dennis Daniel! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you have successfully <clears throat> navigated yourself to Bearcast Radio's hit talk show segment, The Dennis Daniels Show. I am your host, the only DJ on Bearcast Radio that's tough enough, and the first ever recipient of the Bearcast Radio Lifetime Achievement Award, Dennis Daniel. And joining me as always, well, for the first time in a long time, he is the Bill DeMott to my Booker T, the boss of them on, John Pokemon. Chicka chicka, yeah, feels so good to be back. John, where in the world have you been? I've been on hiatus. I've got this little buzzkill called class. And work. And work. And, and a, a life. And a car payment. Yeah, I, I hear you so. there. But, John, you have missed quite a cavalcade of insanity here on the Daniels Show. I mean, from from what I've heard this past quarter, yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty epic, even without me. You know, we've gotten to talk with voice actors like Wendy Lee, Megami33, and Chris Rich from Salem Luna Bridge, Karen Strassman. But I'm glad you're here tonight. You know why, John? And why is that? Because tonight on the Dennis Daniels Show, I promised everyone last week that I would make this season of The Altis Explosion the biggest season of... Of all time, bigger guests, bigger loudness, bigger biggerness. That's not a real phrase, but I said bigger it anyway. Yeah. I said those words. Those words came out of my mouth. Like on the Verizon commercial with the Green Lantern? No, I can't say I've seen that one yet. Well, anyway, John, tonight on the Dennis Daniels Show, we have got straight off WWE Tough Enough, Jeremiah Riggs. Woohoo! Now, for those who are asking yourself, Hi there, Dennis. Well, who in the world's Jeremiah Riggs, and why should I care? I'll tell you why. Because he came in third on Tough Enough this season. Wow. That's right. And there were 14 contestants, including a lot of big guys, a lot of skinny dudes, Miss USA, Rima Fakir. And he beat, and I'll see if my, if my math is correct, he beat 11 out of 14 people. That's, that's, uh... That's more than half. That's, yeah, that's pretty good pretty impressive you know this guy has got a lot of potential he's got a lot of charisma a lot of energy his nickname is big rig big rig all big right. rig i like Why is that his nickname big rig we'll learn more about that later in the show all righty but i gotta tell you guys this the dennis daniel show is becoming a juggernaut on the youtubes we are starting to upload classic episodes on youtube.com forward slash all taste explosion you can catch classic interviews with henry winkler Kofi Kingston, Low Key, Kyle Labor, Vic Mignogna, and a whole bunch of other great guests. Now, a quick reminder that July 4th, our Eric Stewart interview fan art contest ends. So get those submissions in to alltasteexplosion at gmail.com. And that's not even the biggest news. Coming next week, a brand new website for the All Taste Explosion. What? Have you seen it, John? I have, yes. It is quite to epicness. It's pretty good, yeah. I think it's going to be greater than Nyancat. Which is a cat, like a, like a pop tart, yeah. going through space. Have you ever we're seen we're that? on our big boy stuff right now. Oh yeah, I tell you what. But anyway, let's get ready and get into this interview. Are you ready, John? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. You know, he may not have passed Stone Cold's test, but I think from what I've seen, he'll pass our test. Our next guest is a critically acclaimed professional wrestler who just got off appearing on the newest season of WWE Tough Enough, and we have him here on the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give you Mr. Jeremiah Ray. <laughs>
Jeremiah, thank you, and welcome to this Daniel Show. Yeah, I appreciate y'all guys for having me on. How y'all doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. How are you doing, Jeremiah? Man, just playing in the dirt, dude. <laughs> playing in the dirt. Playing uh, in the playing dirt. Playing in the dirt. Rub some dirt on it. Uh, yeah, rub some dirt and walk it off, Barbara. But I got to say, um, Jeremiah, first off, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. It, it, it's, it's truly an honor. I mean, I've been following Tough Enough ever since episode one. And I got to say, from the get-go, when I saw you walking into that ring for the first time, I was like, that's my guy. Jeremiah is my guy. And who I'm going to think is going to get that WWE contract. Yeah, uh, you know, if I'd have seen myself walking in there, uh, you know, I believe I'd have picked that guy too. You know, I'd, I'd, believe, I'd have picked myself uh, only because, you know, the moment I walked through the door, uh, you know, I, w I was there to set the standards. Uh, I, I was there to uh, raise the ball every day and to accept uh, to accept the example, which I think I did one hell of a job doing. I don't think you raised it. I think you broke it. I think you broke it. You took it and smashed it in the head. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, uh, you know, I believe I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of be on a cocky note and say, yeah, I believe I broke the son of a bitch too. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was it was one thing, you know, um, you know, when I knew I knew going in, you know, time time was gonna. Time was against me. In other, in other words, what I'm saying is, is, you know, I knew there was a lot of experienced guys. I really believed I was the the most unexperienced person there. You know, besides, you know, let's say you're Miss USA or whatnot. I mean, you had guys there with five, six, almost a nine year, ten years experience, um, which you know knew the should, should have known the business uh, in and out. Um, but yet, you know, as, as we found on the show, sometimes what you think you know, you really you don't know, but you know, uh, the, the, the one thing is, the show the show was called Tough Enough, and uh, you know that that I, I really still believe. You know, living up to the to the show, I, I still believe I'm a winner. You know, bar none over everybody because I do. I believe I'm, I'm the I was the toughest son of a bitch on the show. Jeremiah, I could not agree with you anymore. Even if you took your words, you put them on paper and slapped me in the face with it, I could not agree with you anymore. Well, I appreciate that, man. I mean, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's just one thing. Uh, it, it's one thing to, to just to show up and, and, and talk, but but it's a, it's another thing to to show up and get people's attention and and, and, and you know, day in and day out, have them have them uh, standing on the tips of their toes and on the edge of their seat. Uh, you know, not only can I talk about it, I can do it. I think that uh, you know where where you draw the line between people that that think they can and, and know they can. You know. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. Well, let's go ahead and get into the questions. Uh, what got you interested in professional wrestling? Man, you know, uh, I mean, I'm a straight shooter, you know. Um, I, I followed wrestling when I was a kid. I, I, I tell people this all the time. You know, there's, there's a million of questions like, you know, uh, what's your favorite wrestler, man? What's your, you know, a lot of times I, I, can't, I can't be straight up forward. I mean, if I, if I said one of them questions, uh, I, there's a lot of questions I can truly answer, but I'm not going to answer a, tr a question that, I, that I'm going to give a false answer to. Um, because you know, I, I wasn't just I, I, I knew I knew the sport, but I did I don't know it like a lot of people. You know, would it probably expect me to know it, or, or you know, why 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 don't I know it? I'll give you the reason why. You know, I never would have dreamed in a million years I'd be standing where I'm standing now and in the position I'm in. Uh, but you know, throughout everything I've ever done, you know, I believe it's led to this. You know, my dream as a little kid was to be a professional athlete. You know, that was going back to all the you know baseball, football, you know uh, that I did. You know. Everything I've done uh, led me to this. Um, you know, uh, having, a, I believe, you know, through my mixed martial arts career, I had a lot of people that uh, asked me, you know, have you ever thought about professional wrestling, man? I think you, you, you got something different about you. you. Have you ever thought about trying it? And, you know, the, my, my deal was, I was like, man, you know, I don't know. I never would have dreamed that someone would have asked me that. You know, it's kind of, you know, growing up, you know, how we grew up, you know, you, you, you know you're know, a kid out of the trailer park, man, you, you never – you know, uh, you know, I never sell, sold myself short, but sometimes you just, you know, it's like, damn, this is really, ha you know, it's like a dream come true. It's like, man, is this really happening? You know, you, you talk about stuff, and then all of a sudden it's right there in front of you. Um, you know, I'd previously, you know, I, I'd great, I had a great team of managers, man. I had a great team of people that looked out for me and ended up talking to some people, and they, the question kept going on. All of a sudden, you know, I'm in – uh, Terry Taylor's office with TNA talking about, you know, what what was my interest in the business. Uh, and, and then after a Dutchman, you know, I found with the Dutchman Tail and he, he found me, you know, we kind of found each other. He, he gave me that, he was like, man, you know, 
uh, first time I met him, it was almost like an interview, which I didn't know that. But he he calls my my manager and he calls me and he said, oh, "Kid, I'm, I'm gonna let you know something." He said, "I don't know what it is." He said, "You got it though." I, I can't, can't. He said, "It's something about your look, the way you talk, just the, the way you, whenever you walk into somewhere." He said, "It caught my eye the first time I saw you." He said, "I, I believe you can do a, you can you know do a damn damn good job and, and really blow this business away." And, and, you know, when you have people like that, that that have faith in yourself, well, first of all, you got to have faith in yourself before people can have faith in you. And that's one thing I always do is I have faith in myself. I believe in myself. I love myself. And I, and I believe that's where I am today. And, and you can, you know, it, you can see it. You know, I believe I walk in the, in the room somewhere. I give off that, that vibe and that charisma of someone, you know, damn, you know, who, who is that? And well, I might not be, I, you know, I don't consider myself, you know, I, I'm just me. But, but it, I think sometimes I give off, or I do, I ain't going to say sometimes, I give off that vibe that everybody wants to know, man, who is that son of a gun right there? Well, I mean, I'm just talking to you on the phone right now, and I can already feel the electricity and the passion and the charisma coming through the microphone. It's amazing. I'm man, a- you, you know, that's one thing I, 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 I got to say. You know, I'm a people person. I've, I've, I always say, you know, I've never met a stranger, and that's one thing I'm good at talking. But I'm myself. You know, if you met me on the street, you shook my hand. I'm, I'm going to talk to you the same way I talk to you on the phone. I'm going to be myself, you know. I mean, that's like me right now. Hell, I'm at home. I'm, I'm playing in dirt. I'm in a damn dump truck playing with moving dirt, playing with track hose and, and dump trucks and stuff. That's me. I don't give a damn how big of a superstar I've ever been or will become. Man, I'm going to do what I love doing, and, and that, that's just me. You know, that's how I was raised. I'm a hard worker. And, you know, I, I, I love doing what I do. It's, it's like I have a twin. It's like I'm a twin, yeah, John. Not a thing wrong with that. <clears throat> well, um, what kind of sacrifices have you had to make to chase your dream of being a pro wrestler? Man, you know, the biggest sacrifice is a lot of people, you know, some people talk about them or whatever, but, you know, I hold deep to my heart. My, my son, you know, that's, that's a big sacrifice, you know, and, and you got to something you just got to live with, and that's something that you got you to gotta take note. I mean, uh, I got a little boy, Jay Shree, you know, I mean, that's, that's, if, I, if I had anything in this world, uh, that's all I got. Um, you know, that's all I, I'm ever going to leave behind, no matter how much I believe, you know, people that have kids, and, and no matter how much money, no matter how much stuff they got, you know, that's really the only thing that you, you've got that, that's going to be worth anything. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a big sacrifice being away from your kid, and uh, sometimes you just you just got to understand that. But you got to understand that with yourself. But, uh, you know, he knows. You know, I, I, got, I picked him up yesterday, and... Uh, uh, at the at the YMCA, you know, they're doing summer camp. Man, it was crazy. All the kids, you know, they know who I am, and they they all just erupted. And you know, he 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 knows, you know. And I and I told him, I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to see you. You know, he, he he's an all star baseball player at seven years old. Um, but he knows, you know. I always tell him, I always remind him, you, you know, you understand that he loves you. Uh, I miss being away from you, but you, you understand what I'm doing, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know you got to work. I understand what you're doing. And he loves it. You know, he loves seeing me on TV and, and doing what I love to do. And that's one thing, you know, that understanding between me and But he, but I try to teach him, you know, that I, I, I hate, you know, I don't like being away from you because you, you everything. But that, that's a big sacrifice, you know, even even just being away from your family, you know. Uh, I mean, that was one of the sacrifices I did in, in fighting. You know, my mama had heart surgery uh, back in January. And, uh I was there for, but there were some, some times I really had, I had, there was a time uh, I had a fight right before that, and, uh, you know, I couldn't be, I could I was like a week I, I couldn't be there for when she had surgery and stuff, but as soon as I got off work, she she knows, you know, and, but my family understands, you know, that's one thing they don't ever do is sell, sell my dreams short, uh, because anything, they always know they want me to be happy, and man, that's just having a great family and having people that understand what you do. Well, I couldn't begin to even imagine what what kind of personal toll that takes on a guy like you, Jeremiah. I mean, having to be away from everything you love just so you can chase your dream, it's got to be very, very, very hard. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, like, like uh, I'll say this, I'll say this quote, I, I don't, can't recall where I heard it or I just, uh, just come, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, you can't, you can't catch a dream if you're not chasing it, you know? Um, you know, you catch that dream, you got to chase it, and you know, not not everybody, not everybody's dreams come true. But you know, you got to get, you know, you can't, you, you know. I always say, yeah, I tried, no matter what, and, and and I don't believe if you tried, I don't believe you, you fail at what you, if you and if you so called fail at what you do, you gave it as long as you gave it a hundred percent. Hey, what the hell did you have to lose in the long run? You know. True. That's that, that's very true. Mm-hmm. 
Now, after you graduated Mississippi Delta Community College, you signed up with the United States Army and served a tour in Afghanistan with the 1st Ranger Battalion. What was yeah. that experience like? Man, that was, uh, it was, it was really, a, it was, it was pretty badass experience. Uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I, I loved it, man. You know, I, that's one thing I've always, you know, set out to be is anything I'm going to do or be, I want to be the best, you know, the best of the best. And when I went, when I went in the military, you know, my dad's in the military, his dad was in there. Actually, my dad's over in Afghanistan right now, man. Um, he's been over there since uh, last September. But, uh, you know, I kind of, it was kind of, you know, following my dad's footsteps, you know, something my dad always said that was good for me to do. And, and I respect him for, 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 for giving me that knowledge, man. I, I look back and I'm glad I did it. But, uh, the one thing I've always told myself, I'm going to do this, man. I want to be the, I want to be the best of the best. And then I, I went to Ranger Battalion. And, man, I, that experience was so awesome. It taught me a lot. It really, uh, some, you know, it can, it can make you find yourself and who you really are. Being at, in Afghanistan was a wild experience. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was a lot going on, uh, you know, shit, you know, you, you close calls all the time, man, especially, you know, doing what we did. Uh, but it, it was a drilling rush. I mean, it, it really was a badass experience, and I, I'll never forget it. Well, I just want to say thank you to you and your father for serving the Army. We always try to take time out of our show to thank all those who have served in the armed forces and overseas. You know, the, the sacrifices is very great and it can be stressful and, and, and take out the soul. But we want to thank you guys for, you know. Yeah, yeah having... I appreciate the people that are doing it right now. BearCastRadio.com, this is the Disney Hill Show. We've got Jeremiah Riggs from WWE Tough Enough on the air. Not many people may know this, but before your pro wrestling career, you competed as a mixed martial artist fire, where you right. were trained by Frank Shamrock, who is the adopted brother of former WWE superstar, the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. And you fought yeah. with various organizations like Strike Force and Bellatar Fighting Championships. What is that like, and how does it differ from competing in professional wrestling? Um... Well, um, it, it, it really is. I mean, it's a lot different, of course. You know, you, I mean, you know, being in that, I mean, that's as real as it gets. Uh, you know, there, there's, you know, it, it's as physical as you want to get physical with somebody. Um, it, it's a hell of an experience. Uh, it, it, it's some hell, hellacious training. Um, I mean, you really, you know, it's, it, you, you get your bumps and bruises for sure. But, but it really, they, they really do share a lot of similarity. I mean, wrestling, you know, ain't. You know, people can all fake. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, ain't fake about, you know, going in there and doing a wrestling match and getting your ass slammed around. Uh, I, I walked out of the ring a couple of times, you know, on Tough Enough. Uh, and it felt like I, I was just in a, a, a three-round, you know, a three, five-minute round fight. Um, I mean, it, it was it was brutal. Uh, I mean, it, 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 the physicality uh, of both of them can share similar qualities, but a fighting experience, man, I hold that dear to my heart. I, I love, I love mixed martial arts. It, and, um, it, it, you talking about a rush. I mean, it is a total different experience, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like bringing you back to them gladiator days, man. I mean, you, you find out who the man is. I mean, that you, you put him in a cage and then go at it, but it, but it's a respectful business that sometimes a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that love it, but there's a lot of people that, that don't like anything about it. But it's a sport. You know, I don't believe it's no different than any sport out there. It's just, you know, full contact. Uh, people are very respectful in the business. I respect the business. And, um, you know, it, it, it's one hell of a way to make a living, I'll tell you that. Well, personally, I don't think me or John could do that. Could you do that, John? Yeah, no, that's you got to be a pretty badass man to do that. Yeah, like, Do like Dominique Steele. You know, we got a friend from our high school days, Dominique Steele. He's a MMA fighter. Uh, he he a yeah. big dude. He big. You got to you got to be a pretty you got to be a pretty bad man to do that. <clears throat> oh man, I, I would really hate to get into the ring with either Dominique or you, Jeremiah. I'd I, I'd be I'd be trying to claw that guy. Ah, get me out of here! Ah, what did I get in this? Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's a lot different experience, you know. A lot of people uh, I've seen, you know, after Frank Shamrock, you know, I've trained with a lot, you know, I, I was uh, a part of the hit squad for, uh, with Matt Hughes. I've been with Alan Belcher, Pat Militich. I mean, I've trained with Tim Sylvia, James Pulver. Um, I mean, I've trained with Robbie Lawler, you know. Uh, I've trained with the best in the world. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people that, that thought or knew that they thought they knew a lot about it until they got punched in the mouth. And it, it's a total different mindset after you, after that happened. 
still, <laughs> I'm flabbergasted just how amazing how you guys can just take all those punches and kicks to the head and kicks to the side. Of the, ugh, I, I have to look away at sometimes just because it's, it's, it looks, it's brutal. Yeah, I've had my share of it, too. Well, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Isn't that, is, isn't that yeah. the old saying, John? Yeah, that is. That's true. I believe that. You're one of the 14 contestants chosen for the fifth season of WWE Tough Enough, which, was, of course, was hosted by WWE Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin. How did you go about auditioning for the show? Uh, well, you know, um, it, uh, it was brought up to me, and, you know, um, it was, um, I thought, you know, wow, you know, uh, hell yeah, you know, uh, you know, I sent him, a, sent him an audition tape and, uh, you know, just uh, sent him another tape, you know, showed him some of the, what I, what I, what I do, you know, I sent some fight videos, I think, and uh, a couple other things like that we did. And, um, you know, they, they, they showed a, a good interest in me. And after that, you know, you go through a process, you know, where they, you know, sit down with, uh, with, you know, people, team, you know, people from USA network, people from, uh, old, you know, to, uh, rent that runs stuff enough. And, uh, yeah, you know, they they really they see they they look at your personality, look at your build, look at your character, they ask you what you think you can bring. You know, they it it, it is a long long process, and then you know, uh, man, you know, I, I guess they saw what they liked, man. They liked what they seen, and uh, you know, the next thing I knew, I got a call, and I was I was bam in the house, man. And then, um, but um, it, it was it was definitely it was definitely just one one crazy crazy ass experience. I mean, I. Uh, whenever I got child, was I was I was super thrilled and, and super super privileged to, to to be in this season of Tough Enough. I really was, and man, you know I I know a lot of people ask me about my future, and I, I mean I'm looking, you know, if the WWE's waiting on me, they're backing up. Well, I don't see why WWE would want you, Jeremiah. I mean, you're tougher than a three dollar steak, and I think I think that you could take that place to places I I don't even think could be possibly possible. Yeah, you know, and I, and I and that's the thing, you know, I believe in myself. And, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going to go out, you know, uh, it's one thing, and I, I talked to, you know, John Cena talked to me about it. He said, if you go out, you go out on your own terms. And I believe I've gone out on my own terms, every everything I've ever gone out in. And, um, you know, that's one thing I'm looking forward to is, is really, you know, meeting the man himself, you know, shaking Vince McMahon's house, uh, uh, shaking Mr. McMahon's hand and saying, you know, look, Let's make some damn money, you know. I ain't I ain't scared to step on no toes, and if I had to step on his toes to get in the business, I guess you just need to watch his feet. Yeah, he better, better or, or go for his toupee. Oh, either way, either way, either way, you would. I think you would really bring something that I haven't seen. Again, we talked with uh, Low Key about this. You know, Low Key, you know, for, formerly known as Caval from NXT, he had great persona, great charisma, great skills in the ring. But the problem was that they thought it couldn't be marketable. Right. And and even though he has something that we haven't seen in ages, he's one of the only guys running around without a dorky catchphrase. And, again, I'll bring that back to The Miz, who keeps running around going, Awesome! And even John Cena, yeah. even John Cena, who is a very nice guy and has been on the show before, even the you can't see me, you want some, come get some. You know, they're pairing to the kids, and what they need to be doing is focusing on Individuals who bust their butts at their craft, who's had worldwide experience. Again, Loki had world experience, mobile championships, working with different companies. He's got experience, charisma, great mic skills, essentially what you got, and they could not market that. And it has me pulling my hair, John pulling his hair, a bunch of fans pulling their hair, and here we are. Now people are, are being turned away from it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like I said, you know, I, that's one thing I'm, not, I'm not, I don't give up on. I believe. I mean, everything you say is so right. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you, you you're sitting back and wondering, you know, what the hell, um, you know, what in the, what, where did you know even like where in the hell did this decision come from? I mean, are we playing politics? Are we being, you know, are we being for real? Or was the name of this show really called Tough Enough? Did I miss something? You know, uh, you know, a lot of people will call me a sore loser if they want to or whatever, uh, but I hate losing. Uh, but, you know, I, I give credit where credit's due. But then again, when you, you look at the, how the ending goes and you're thinking, all right, well, where was this guy the whole time? What, what did anybody do that I didn't do? And 
there's a lot of shit that I did that didn't no one do. You know what I mean? Um, I showed up every day. There, there was not a day that I didn't raise the bar, like I said before. And, uh, well, not to mention I wasn't in the bottom three. Why? Because they had no, they had no reason. But, you know, I mean, I could sit here and, and get in a pissing contest with someone if I wanted to, and, you know, that ain't going to do me no good. But in the reality of the fact is, you know, hey, it is what it is, really. Uh, but, you know, like I always say, you know, I always tell my fans, man, hey, look, you know, the WWE w- looks and, and listens and, and, and knows what's out there. They know how bad a lot of people want to see me back in there. And the thing about it is you can't cook on a cold stove, so I don't see why they should let something hot go cold. You know what I mean? But I'm doing what I'm doing, man. I'm in the gym. I'm staying in shape. You know, I, I'm waiting. You know, I mean, like I said, if WWE's waiting on me to back it up, I'm ready. Uh, but I'm looking to sign. I mean, that's, that's me. I'll tell you straight up. I'm looking to, to sign a developmental deal, and I plan on getting in there, doing what I need to do, handling business, and being drafted to Raw or SmackDown. So what was it like competing on Tough Enough and working with greats like Booker T, Bill DeMont, Trish Stratus, and Stone Cold Steve Austin himself? Man, you know, it was, it's, I mean, history in, it's, it's history in the making. That's all. I mean, uh, you know, you got so, Stone Cold, uh, you know, Steve Austin, you know, you know, he, he's broke, I believe, all all the records. You know, he, he's gone down in history. You know, he's a Hall of Famer, um, and he's on tough enough. I mean, that, that, that right there speaks for itself. You know, Bill DeMott, he's like a drill sergeant, you know, great guy, uh, old school. Uh, Booker T, man, I mean, it's uh, – Man, well, what else, what can you not say about Booker T? I mean, he's he's almost like I, I would say. I always one time I told myself he's like the Michael Jackson of the WWE. Man, his cat's so slick. Um, I, I love to watch Booker T move. Man, he's just he's just so so fluent in the ring and uh, <clears throat> always has something good to say and, and a lot of a lot of knowledge. You know, especially you know you're you're talking about a lot of knowledge right there with them three. Even Trish Stratus. I mean, even being a diva. So she can bring so much to the table for for some of the the guys in there, you know. I mean, she has she's. I mean, God, Lee, look at her, look at her. She's got the look. She's got a nice ass. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's got a she's she, she's got a mind of of Einstein, you know. I mean, she all. I mean, all four of them, bar none, was just a hell of an experience, and it's an experience that you know, man, it's a, you you'll never get it back. And but like I said. At the very end of my day, you know, I have no regrets. You know, I left it all in there, and, you know, now it's time to move on. And, 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 and you know, let's, you know, what I'm looking at is, you know, let's get picked up by the WFD and, and really and really rock the show. I don't think Albert Einstein looked as good as Trish Stratus does. Uh, you know what I'm saying, Johnny? Yeah, I know what you mean on that. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> so what is Stone Cold like in real life? Man, I, everybody back home asks me, man, is he really like, man, Stone Cold is exactly how you see it. That's how he is. But I'm going to tell you what, he loves drinking some beer. He's a good time. He really is. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, and that was one thing, you know, just hanging out with him off cameras. And, and even after the Monday Night Raws, you know, uh, I mean, he, that's, that's a, he's like a hometown boy, man. I mean, he, he's one of the, one of the fellas. Um, I'm really glad to now even, I believe, you know, call him my friend. You know, I really believe me and him uh, got a good friendship going on. You know, I keep in contact with him. And, um, you know, he's always he's always there to, uh, got, got got his hand out, you know, you know if, if you need it. And that's one thing I respect about Stone Cold. But, uh, you know, he, he really, he's a tough son of a bitch, though. Now, don't get it, you don't get it twisted. You know, he ain't. You know, he, he really is as, as hardcore as he is, you know, as it looks. I mean, that's him, you know, but he, he is a really good, he's a really good dude, you know, down south. He's a, he's a good old boy, man. You might have to help us get him on the show because I, I would love to see that confrontation. That would be that would be a history, to quote you, history in the making right there. <laughs> yeah, I'd give you a hell yeah for that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would you give us a hell yeah, John? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. BearcastRadio.com. This is the Daniel Show. We got Jeremiah Riggs from WWE Tough Enough on the air. Now, I remember from the first episode, you, you had a bit of a mishap during the, the first half of the show, and your two front teeth came out during an exercise. Can you, can you tell us about that? <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I didn't. A lot of people were like, well, did you spit your teeth? I was like, no, I didn't, man. I, I just, I got the breathing real, you know, I got the breathing. I, I was trying to get my breathing rhythm down, so I was. You know, opening and closing my mouth, man, and and it, man, my my flipper just caught caught some wind right there between, you know, um, 
to where I put it in my mouth, and it 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 went it went in the air. And inside, I wanted to laugh so damn bad because it, because I was sitting there thinking, man, they are fixing to fall out when they when they take when they look at what just flew in or flew in that ring. But you know, I did. It was you know you can't you can't stop what you're doing, man. I just kept going and. You know, at the end, when he told me to get his damn, get my damn teeth out of his ring, all you saw, all I could do was smile about it. Gosh, I mean, even build up, I was all like, uh, those my teeth? Like, <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, it's, I've done it before, man. I've, I've, it's, it's, it's not, that wasn't the first time it ever happened, so I really wasn't shocked when it, when it did it. I was more, I was more in, 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 in laughter than anything. You know, I never knew they could make a two-tooth denture top. Did you know that, John? I was not aware of this, no. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Just, uh, because it was just too funny. Because you know how some wrestlers have gum in their mouth, and when they get hit, the gum goes flying out? If you got hit, I think I think you would raise a few more eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, but, but wow! I mean, if that that was amazing, that was like, I bet you, I bet you, that was what they were thinking for the rest of the day. How in the man. hell did his teeth fly out of his mouth? Oh, you know they had been talking about that one for a minute. Oh, oh wow! Oh gosh, I just saw oh, that was that was priceless. Well, you got to compete in Tough Enough in an array of different challenges. What was your favorite and your least favorite, and why? Man, you know. I really enjoyed running from that damn dog. Um, I've actually had a little experience, you know, with my dad. You know, he's uh, back home, runs a SWAT team or whatever. So I've been around that kind of stuff. So I've watched my dad do it a lot of times. And, uh, man, that that's just, I mean, you're against a, you know, a, 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 I mean, you're against a beast, man, a four-legged, four-legged dog that can, you know, that, that is trained. They're just trained to tear your ass up, and and I I thought that was just an awesome experience. Um, that that was really fun. I just I just liked the the competition of it. You know, I mean, you versus a dog. Um, I don't know. You know, I ain't gonna say. I mean, I guess they say my least favorite was. I mean, I was a good sport about it. I really wasn't all up and in, in dressing up as a cheerleader. You know, I never would have. I never would have thought I'd ever be dressing up as a cheerleader, but or serving or serving food. Uh, in 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 roller skates, but you know you got to do what you got to do. You bite the bullet and you deliver. That's 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 all it comes down to. I would personally be scared to be even if I was in a padded suit. I would want you know like a plastic bubble. You know if I'm if I'm if I'm running like if I'm running away from I want Scooby Doo running down here. He looks like he's gonna <laughs> take my head off. I'd be I'd be running like a bitch. <laughs> it's, it, it had to be scary. Uh, I didn't think of it that way. I, I'd really purely thought of it like a competition, man. Me versus animal. Let's let's see what he's got. <laughs> well, that, that, uh, j- j- could you imagine doing that? They they wore this padded suit and they had to yeah. outrun a dog. Yeah, I didn't didn't get to see that episode. How how well did that go over for you? Well, I tell you what, the, uh, if I, I believe if I wouldn't have had that padded suit on, I'd have outran that damn dog. He, I mean, I he barely caught me before I got to the finish line. Huh, hmm. but but you got to the finish line. That's what matters. Yep, that's it. And I, and, and and I didn't even know the dog was on there. I was dragging. I was running just as fast as I started running with him on me. <laughs> uh, gee, gee. Didn't Eric just carry the the dog? Just he had it on his arm. He was just carrying it and, and yeah, walking he was there. Just carrying it with one arm. That's, hmm. Gosh, that that is that was. I I would literally wet myself if mm. I had a dog barreling down at me. It, Oh, gravity. That's that, intense. That is intense. But then again, that's why it's called Tough Enough. That's mm-hmm. it. Were there any competitors or trainers on the show that you didn't get along with? You know, uh, to be honest with you, I really, I guess you could say everybody else. I really didn't pay any attention to anybody else. You know, me and Luke, you know, we became boys on the show, and uh, everybody else was just, they were, they were, they were bums. I mean, they... You talking about no life in them? I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, Jesus. I didn't want to turn no one's wrist to actually have a good time, and that it, it was dull. It really was. I mean, straight up honest with you, everybody was really dull. Worried about, I guess, what their mamas and daddies thought of them, or what their wives, or what they what they promised the world to somebody. I'm like, man, you 
you got one opportunity in life to do what you love doing. And, I mean, you're on the road and you're in the WWE. I mean, you're living life. It ain't a job. You know, all these knuckle, you know, I got a, I got a job with the WB. Why would you even consider that a job? You know, I don't consider it as a job. I consider it living life to the fullest and doing something you love doing. You know, I, I love, I mean, I ain't waking up every morning saying, yeah, I got a job. I'm just, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm just, let me go to work. I think if you look at it that way, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, I think, it, I think, you know, call your bluff, you know, uh, I think you you gotta wake up and love this. Shit. You know, you you gotta wake up. You know, it's like me. With MMA, you gotta wake up and want to punch someone in the mouth. You know, you just gotta. Whenever you get in that ring, you just gotta want it. You just gotta love it. You know, you gotta look up, breathe the air, sweat and stuff. And just say, damn, I love. I live for this. Shit. You know, I don't give a damn about anything else. You know. It's like my dad all told all me, you know, if you don't enjoy doing work, if, if, it shouldn't be work. If you don't enjoy doing something, then why are you doing it in the first place? That's it. And I call a lot of people's bluff, man. I call, I, I mean, hell, I even, I mean, look at the ending. I call that a bluff, too. Yeah. It's, well, anyway, along with the challenges and, of course, the training, you, you also got visited by several WWE superstars and legends. Who was your favorite, and what was your first reaction to seeing them come to look at you? Uh, you know, uh, man, I'll I, I tell you, uh, one of my two, I, I really enjoyed, I'm a, I was a big, you know, I, I like John Cena, man. I really enjoyed meeting John Cena, but I really, really enjoyed meeting The Miz. Uh, I liked The Miz, man. Uh, I think, you know, coming from where he came from and how, how many people doubted him and, you know, he didn't win tough enough, look where he's at. That's a that's a hell of a person to to, to look at, even in my shoes, you know, I mean, I look at that, and I've talked to him, and I've talked to him, you know, on the show, I talked to him at, at Raw, you know, I mean, he's always got good things to say, even John Cena, you know, I seen him last Monday, you know, he come up, what's up, dude, Shit, you know, we hung out, you know, talked for, you know, chill for, for a few seconds, and, you know, they know what's up, man, you know, they see something in you, you know what I mean, uh, and that's something I ain't scared, I ain't scared of, I don't get starstruck and all that, I respect them, but, I listen to what they say because I want to learn. And, you know, if you're going to learn from, from anybody, you learn from the best. I mean, them are the two best in the business. And, and them two right there, man, I, I really enjoyed meeting them. I mean, I enjoyed meeting all of them. I mean, especially, I mean, you got Bret Hart. You know, how, how legendary is he? But, um, you know, uh, really just talking to, to everybody, you know, uh, John Cena and The Miz, you know, were, were, two, were, really, were, were really my favorite. It reminds me of a story. Uh, I asked him about uh, TLC a couple of years ago when he had that when he fell through the table accidentally, quote quote. And I go, "Hey, John, I got a question for you." He's like, "Okay, what?" With, with TLC, did you really fall through that table by accident, or or, or was that an, intentional? And he's like, "I'll let you be the judge of that." And I'm like, "Awesome. That is that's why that's why he is he is he's the top dog in WWE. I don't see why everyone is dogging him. Okay, he's no Stone Cold Steve Austin, but he's got the professionalism, the respect for the business to show up every day, and I don't see why everyone's you know busting his chops. Yeah, well, I don't know, man, but he's doing his job. If they bust him that bad, I guess all I can say about it. And I mean, how can you not like a guy like that? All I gotta say is haters gonna hate. That's it. <laughs> and if you got, you know, what would a cat Williams say? If you got twenty tomorrow, you better have forty of them. If you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. That's it. Let well, them all hate me. Well, uh, what was it like to do a uh, the one-on-one um, promo with The Rock? Nah, that was that was pretty nuts, man. I hate it. I enjoy, I always enjoy watching him, you know, watch his movies and stuff like that. And I, I was on the verge of just wanting to bust, bust out laughing so bad, because it was really so awesome. It was, I was just sitting there like, man, this is wild. And, and the shit that flies out of his mouth, just like, just like that, is, I mean, it really is hilarious because he's, he's on, he's on, he's on point. And I just, I was kind of, that's mind blowing. It really is. It really is. And uh, you gotta, you know, I respected it, and I, I thought it was. That was one hell of an experience right there. I, I thought that was just, there was too funny, man. It really was. Yeah, that would be, yeah. I don't know, it just seems like that would be almost surreal. Like, I, I don't even, that would just seem like a dream. Just to stand in the middle of the ring. I think the ring, if, if me and Rock did that, it would just explode. Yep. 
<laughs> he really was. I mean, even to lock up with him and, and, and do a few things we did, that was just his mind boggling. Uh, well, what we got, what we're talking about the Rock and John Cena. Let's get your take. What do you think of the Rock Cena feud? And uh, who, who do you think will come out prevailing at the main event at WrestleMania 28 next year? Man, you know, that's. I don't know. I really, that's a hard one to call. I mean, that's that's almost too close for me to even want to give an opinion. I think, I don't know, man. You know, I, I, some way, you know, I, I like, I like, I love watching the Rock perform, but also, if, uh, 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 a part of me is is going with John Cena, man. He's a big, powerful dude. dude. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I like. I like him because he's just, uh, you know, he, he really is an athlete. I mean, not, I mean, The Rock's an athlete too, but man, I, I like watching him work out. I mean, he, damn, he, I believe he's, he, I believe he, I would go to say he is probably one of the strongest people in the WWE. I mean, man, the dude is, is weight, is weightlifting and, and stuff is just phenomenal. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of watching him work out and stuff like that. And, um, I'm, I, I like what he, what he brings to the table. Um, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. I'm going to tell you that. I don't. It's only. I think it'll be too close to call. Hell, they might have. They they liable to knock each other out and it could be a draw. You know I mean, you never know. Someone could run in the ring and and, and screw it up for one of them. Man, he, he, there's so many things that could go right and could go wrong. It it really is so hard to call. You know who who's gonna who's gonna come out on top. But I believe both of them are going to come with their game face on, and both of them are going to want it just as bad as the other one. It's like a WrestleMania inside a WrestleMania. It's like yeah, it's like the Reese's that, that, Peanut Butter Cup of, of wrestling. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. He's, I he's, mean, it's it's one topping uh, right on the other topping, and then you I mean, damn, you, you almost get lost in it. John, who do you think's gonna come out, Rock or Cena? Who do you think? I mean, it's I don't I just don't even know. Like, uh, I don't. That's like saying what's better, Snickers or Crunch Bar. Oh, like, uh, don't, 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 just, or Fritos or Cheetos. Exactly. You just you just can't pick one. Or charcoal or propane. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but I will tell you this, Jeremiah. Do me a favor. Do not get involved in the Cena Rock Twitter. We did that, and we have been getting punched in the head by Rock <laughs> fans. They, they have been. It's been nasty. We've had to run behind the barricades and take cover. It's like, oh my gosh, we're we're in the middle of a war. Yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can only imagine. Oh, they, oh, those rock fans, oh, they are, they are nasty, and they will drop it bombs on you. It almost makes me want to do it just to really find out about it. I mean, it, it, you're gonna have me, you're gonna have me thinking about it so bad now. I might just have to do, do, do it, it. Do it. Do it. it. I mean, yeah, do it, do I would it. recommend doing it just because I read some of the stuff that these people were posting, and it, it, I don't know, it made me laugh. Yeah, because well, I mean, it's probably it's sometimes I bet you it's a real kick in the nuts, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh! Actually, actually, we can read a couple of them right now if if you want to. You, here are some of these, and I love this. I love this. This is hilarious. I got F off, you idiot! You're just jealous that the Rock didn't come to your show. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, right, because we have real actors on our show. You know, like the freaking Fonz. So, so that's what I said to him. I got one from a uh, Kyoto Seven. At least it's and not John Cena's doodle. Which is, <laughs> you know, I got, um, oh, man. let's see, I got, you do realize R Rocky pretty much made WWE what it is today. Best mic skills of all time without Rock, there is no Cena. I understand that. I'm not saying that they're both bad. I'm just saying that this, this the Rock's taking photos of him with cows on a farm. Yeah. And, and, and there's no point to that. What What is that showing? It's like, I'm better than you, not on the boo-boo, stick your head and doo-doo. It, it, it's immature. <laughs> And for those who want to see all the tweets we've been getting, head over to twitter.com slash explosion yeah, and follow us, and I mean, you will see, oh, we are getting... I mean, it's to the point now I'm surprised we haven't started getting death threats. Oh. Like, these these people are serious. And, 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 and all I said was, it's appropriate that The Rock is on a farm. Where else are you going to find the same amount of manure that comes out of his mouth? Oh. Oh. Again, I made that at two thirty. Just getting back from Washington D.C. and John Cena liked it, and he retweeted it. <laughs> oh gosh! It, it, again, I've opened the floodgates to a Twitter hell. But Jeremiah, do it! It's do yeah, it! It's get fun. in on this. The picking is good. How about what, I, what we do is we get done. I tweet you, and then about it, and then we'll see how bad how how. How just how bad I can get kicked. Okay, <laughs> you will have to follow us on Twitter at AT Explosion. Oh, I got you. All right, all right. ASAP. All right. Okay, and I'll I'll send you a tweet to mention that. Okay, okay. 
you were the last competitor eliminated before the winner was announced last week on Monday Night Raw. What are your feelings on being eliminated, and do you agree with the reasons why Stone Cold eliminated you? You know, uh, I can't say that I do agree with it, because, I mean, what uh, I think if you watch the show, the one thing that really kind of chaps your ass, where in, where in the world did, well, was I ever dangerous? Now, if you want to go back to, am I a dangerous person? Yeah, sure. If you really want to get physical and put your hands on me, we can, we can, I can show you how dangerous I can be. But that's besides the matter. I wasn't dangerous in the fact of hurting people. I didn't, you know, break anybody's ankle. I didn't, you know, almost break somebody's neck by throw, uh, over throwing them over the top rope like uh, your winner did. Um, you know, I, I mean, I really, I, I'm not going to say that I agree with it because that, you know, that's just all, selling myself short, man. I don't agree with it. I mean, almost like I said, you know, it's someone's opinion, and who gives a damn about someone's opinion, even if it's Stone Cold? And that's not a hit at Stone Cold. It is what it is. That's, that's my quote. You know, it really is. It is what it is, and I can't do nothing about it. But I know how I did, and I know how I feel about it. And that, and, that's, and I, I think you you look at my fans. Look, just look. Go back to the past two Raws that we were on. You look at everybody's everybody's reaction to the crowd. That that'll show you who your your winner is. I totally agree with you, Jeremiah. I mean, that pop when they said your name compared to guys like Eric or Reba or Joe. Or, or your winner. I mean, I think I got the next biggest pop next to Stone Cold. And, and then he had, and, and I, I mean, I wish I had some music and I could walk out. God damn, I think I could blow the, the damn roof off the arena. <laughs> I, t I totally agree. It should have been a Luke and, and Jeremiah. How many times was he in the bottom three? You were not in the bottom three once. Not once. Not once. Oh, the only the only bottom three I was in was then there was only there was only a top three, so I don't even look at that being in a bottom three. You were the one of the top three competitors on Tough Enough. You were one of the top three, you know? Guys that came before you like like John Morrison and the Miz. You know, John Morrison won it, you know. But look where Miz is now. Like you said, look where he is. He's at the top of the WWE Empire. That's right. And I got That's a right. feeling, Jeremiah, that you are gonna be up there pretty darn soon too. Yeah, you know, I mean, when it, when you like I said, you know, I believe in myself, and uh, you know, I'm 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 here, you know, I'm here for the WWE universe, I'm here for the fans, I'm here for the hard working community, I'm here for your hard knocks out there busting their ass every day. I mean, I'm out here busting my ass right now, but I, but you know, I'm, I'm here to put on a uh, put on a show. I'm gonna give you something you ain't never seen. I'm gonna bring something you ain't never seen. You know, I, you look at everybody in the WWE right now. You look at me. There's no one that looks just like me. There's nothing I don't. There's no one that can bring what I can bring, and there's no one talks like I talk, and there ain't no one that that looks like I look. You know, I'm I'm a total different to me. I'm something now. I, I I really believe I'm something that the WWE hasn't had before. I, I I totally agree. Actually, you kind of remind me. You know, your 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 accent. Or you kind of remind me of a younger hillbilly Jim. There you go. And I, I, I love I love Hillbilly Jim. I mean, I, I don't know why he's not a champion, you know, or why he's in the Hall yeah. of Fame yet. I'll tell you what, um, um, uh, I was told uh, last uh, in the back uh, at, uh, last Monday, um, you know, someone pulled me aside and said, you remind me of a young Stone Cold, a different version, but a young Stone Cold. I've been told that a couple of times, you know, and that's an honor to me. You know, that's a, hell, that's a, that's a damn big pair of shoes to fill. But that's not a pair of shoes that I won't put on and, and go after, you know, go after that and, and, and try to blow away because I'm not the kind of person to back down from that challenge. I ain't the kind of person to back down from anything. And when you get told something like that, you know, that means people will look at you and people will believe in you. And that means you're giving off some hell of a vibe if someone's going to put you in that in that category. Yeah, but you also don't want to be the next Stone Cold. You want to be the first Jeremiah Riggs. That's right. I don't want to be something that's already been. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to be the next Shawn Michaels, John. I want to be the first Dennis Daniel, and I bet you want to be the first John Pokemon. Well, but exactly. Would be your name, but, uh, exactly. Damn, Skippy. Yeah. Well, our final question is, if you have taken anything away from competing on Tough Enough that you could share with the, our audience who wants to go into the business of professional wrestling, what would it be, and what is next for Jeremiah Riggs? Man, if I could give anybody, you know, any any insight or information is, you know, like I said, you know, if, you, if you're you not chasing your dream, you won't ever catch it. You, you don't ever pass up any windows and opportunity because windows and opportunity open and close so fast. You know, don't, don't ever take a, you know, don't take anything for granted. 
if you see something, reach out there and go get it. Don't be scared to go get it, and don't and who and don't let anybody's opinion stop what you're doing. Who you know? Who gives a damn what someone else thinks? Um, but the way I say is, you know, you you keep doing what you're doing, and, and no matter what you're doing, you eventually find your way. And no matter what, if you give you know 100 percent of what you do, no regrets. You know, even if if you if it don't work out in your favor, hey, you got, you're a winner in my book. Uh, and the next step for me is, like I said, you know, uh, I Facebook today. I said I can't. I, you know, I said, you know, I'm I'm big truck driving today. I said I can't wait to the day I, I roll in a damn big rig, blasting some train horns through a WWE crowd, uh, jump out of that some bitch, jump in the ring and ruin someone's night, and maybe even take someone's championship away from them. That would be even greater than the Stone Cold Zamboni. You know, you know, it's just the way the big rig rolls. You know, dry, you know, just. You know, dropping the hammer down, man. Yeah, Jeremiah Riggs, doing pure work. unleaded. Doing work. Getting it done. Okay, well, Jeremiah, I want to thank you so much for being on our show. This is truly a huge honor, and I cannot wait to see in a WWE ring real soon here in Cincinnati, Ohio, see Jeremiah Riggs and go, hey, that guy was on my show. Hey, man, you know, it, it, it's my pleasure. Everybody out there, you know, at Jeremiah Wiggs, Twitter me. You know, I'm going to follow y'all guys. Yes, y'all, we will. Me up. y'all got my number. Y'all call me if y'all ever need anything. 